Welcome back after the break. Now I take the opportunity to introduce our guest for the day, Mr. Arun Menon. Sir, may I have your permission to please begin? Thank you, sir. Sir is a self-motivated leader with business background and software development experience. He has an expertise in the telecom domain, P&Ls, budgets, business analyst, risk assessment, auditing, cross-functional operations, and many more. Sir is a seasoned professional with many years of senior management planning, business operations globally, international and domestic experience. Sir has done his B.Tech in computer science from NIT Kurukshetra, management in business finance from IIF, and global program for management development from University of Michigan, Stephen M. Ross School of Business. Currently, Sir is working at Tech Mahindra with the capacity of Senior Vice President, Communications Department for APAC. Previously, Sir has also worked with Larson and Tubro. With this, I request Sir to kindly address the batch. Uh, okay. So maybe let me start that conversation by talking a bit about myself and where I've been in my life and what I've done. Okay. Um, so I did my schooling, I was telling a professor, I, was, I did my schooling in uh, somewhere near Pune. I did my grad from Haryana, a place which I never visited before I sought my admission. Actually, I'd never gone above this Maharashtra belt. I am a Mallu by birth. Uh, that's all about where my roots are. Um, so I ended up in Haryana of, of all places to do my degree. Um, I did my... Um, I lived for some time in Bom Bombay, Mumbai, uh, for a couple of years. Spent uh, three years in the UK, in London. After which I spent roughly around uh, 10 odd years in the States. I used to live in the United States. Uh, when we decided to pack our bags and come back. And, uh, and we ended up in Pune. Uh, but since then still I continue to live and work in most countries. I think I've traveled almost, all, I've traveled all of Asia pack. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Europe, uh, US, uh, and most of my work is outside India. It's not inside India. So that's where my background comes from. So if you talk about telecom also, I can talk to some level of the Indian telco, but definitely I can talk about the European, Asia Pac, American, whichever part of the rest part of the world tele telecom. Um, so, for, from a, the, your question was what happened in REC, that was, it was called REC at the time, it was REC Krishetar. Um, the interesting part of that journey which helped me is, um, uh, I don't know how much you guys study, but uh, those days we didn't study. <laughs> I think life is a lot more stricter and a lot more disciplined than looks like, uh, than uh, those days when we were kids. Uh, but uh, the interesting part was there is that it was a residential program. So, and we had people coming in from all over the world, uh, country. So we had people, different cultures coming in. It was an amalgamation of cultures. So if there are two, three things which I take away from there is an ability to learn. And the reason was that we push everybody in a corner and the course is demanding. Uh, I used to have professors uh, uh, who were uh, part of these world, so world societies and IEEE for groups, etc. And as typical, they used to be, you remember the old British professors, right? uh, they used to be hard of hearing at some point when it was inconvenient to them. So you would come into the maths professor, and I still remember the maths guy. He would walk in, the old man, um, he used to be head of the worldwide fluid dynamics uh, chair of the worldwide forum. He used to teach in, I think, in MIT and few other places. So he used to walk in, he had always had a suit on. And he would walk in, if you came in two, two seconds late, you had it from him. Uh, but into, into his class. But he was a bit jo jovial character, but a lot of depth of information. So you got, so one thing we enjoyed is, uh, Krishetar was that uh, we used to have technical debates at 10 in the night, 11 in the night in his office. Excellent fun. A um, lot of learning, a lot of learning through peers. That has happened. A uh, lot of cultural learning where we learn to live. You push in a corner, you done things. So even today, uh, and the bonding is very strong. Even after, so actually, to be honest, it's very interesting you ask that question. 
Yesterday, I got a call from uh, my old roomie after 25 years. We spoke after, I think he disappeared off. He is now the CEO of a, he has become the CEO of a component company down in Indore. Uh, and he pinged me suddenly out of the blue and said, hey Arun, where are you? And I said, yeah, this is where I am, this is what I do. And he said, we, after 25 years, we have a back end. So that bonding is extremely strong. Uh, it's, it's a good learning experience, good cultural experience for a guy uh, who had not traveled in the north of India. It was a very interesting experience. Uh, other thing, I learned Hindi. I thought I knew Hindi before I went to Haryana, but then I, very soon I figured out that I had no clue of Hindi. And so I learned to speak Hindi and uh, I started to speak Punjabi a bit. I, sp I spoke Haryanvi. Uh, so you start speaking all the lingos uh, and suddenly, uh, and I, I, I did tour quite a bit of the place. So culturally it was good. Uh, very interesting to understand the rest of India. So that was, if that in short answers your question. Um, and we got ragged quite a bit. So ragging was very common in those days. And uh, in Kurukshetra, those days we used to get ragged by states. So if you're from one state, you get ragged. So I was a Mallu from Maharashtra, got ragged twice. Uh, and ragging was intense. It was terrible, you feel nowadays it's unethical, but it's okay. It creates a bond for whatever kind, the pros, cons of it, whichever way you look at it. So that answers that question, I hope it does. Uh, talking about the telecom industry, if you want to talk about the telecom industry, um, uh, let's talk about the telco. What is a telco? And, um, and the telco, if you look at it, predominantly telco is essentially providing you voice services. Right? If you go back in time, uh, if you look at a BSNL or MTNL in India, what does it provide you? What's the basic service that a telco provides you? It's not voice, actually. It's when you pick up the receiver of your landline, there's a, there's a buzz which comes in, right? That's the extreme basic service which is provided. Basically, you're connecting your handset to the, to the exchange. That's the basic service a telco provides. All right? And that, that connects you and provides you connection to a voice. Now you talk about voice and then you talk about uh, messaging, SMS, USSD, data. Go up the scale. Uh, I don't know how many of you still remember those black phones, uh, if you ever have seen one of these, from at least I have seen n of, n of them. But you think about that phone versus what's in your pocket now and what can you achieve with it. What do you use it for? So the usage pattern of from voice, SMS, data, to you now watching your Netflix movie on your mobile phone, and what's the data consumption pattern there? So that's one trend you want to watch out for. The second trend I want to I want you to take you is that um, many years back when I first uh, went to the states, uh, a call to India would cost me a dollar ten cents a minute. Okay. And by the time I exited the country, it was running at uh, 24 cents a minute, okay, a call to India. So if I want to call home, I pay $1.10. If I pay 24 cents. Today, it cost me less than a cent. So a uh, call to, from India to the US cost me less than a cent, one cent. Now here comes, a, you have the geo thing coming, right? You have unlimited calling. So, so now you start thinking, what are, what are we commoditizing? Where what is being a commodity? Where is your business going? It's a business. End of the day, it's a business, right? So where is your business going to? So think about you're taking a commodity business, convert, commoditizing it, and you still have to earn money. So where are you going to earn money? As a company, if you are a CEO of a telco, where are you going to earn your money? So the money has to come from peripheral services. The peripheral services could be via, you say it's coming by data. Is data expensive? Think about it. What was the cost of a GB of data three years back versus what's the cost of a GB of data today? So you have these data plans, whatever you buy. You guys have prepaid, postpaid, whatever you have. What's the cost of your data three years back versus what is going to be today? And what's going to be next three years after? So where is the money going to come from? Will the companies die? And I want you to think, pause for a minute and think through this because this is a very important subject to think of why the industry exists. 
Do you guys remember the airline crashes uh, maybe 10, 11, 15 years? Have you guys studied that as a case study? I don't know whether you do that. Study, I have a go back in somewhere in the Googles and look up why the airline industry in the US crashed. Why did airlines become bankrupt? Just go back and study that as a case study. It's a fun assignment. You just have a read of it. And you start reading about it, how commoditization and fair cutting brings down the industry as a whole. If you go back, uh, uh, I think it was uh, six, seven years back when, when Europe did the spectrum auction, right? 5G auction. Actually, the auction, when it happened, um, you understand spectrum. I hope you guys understand what's the spectrum. You guys understand it? Or? Please do interrupt right? if you don't understand. It's, it's, I do need that feedback back to see if I, what level of detail you want to go in. Um, if you understand the spectrum auction which happened in the Europe, um, it actually brought down companies. People went bankrupt after that. So now you start thinking, um, uh, Geo goes and launches here. And today, I think this morning's papers you were reading about uh, the Vodafone idea merger, right? Yeah, you heard about that. Um, so think about it six months back or 12 months back. Would you ever have thought about it? So, so the industry is changing. Survival is becoming a challenge. If survival becomes a challenge, I need to get into alternate businesses. What it means to get into alternate businesses, like for example, I'll tell you, there was this country, I'll not name the CEO, but uh, I was talking to the CEO what, uh, two, two, two months back. So I was in this country. Um, I was in Indonesia, let me put it that way. I was in Indonesia and I was talking to the CEO. So we, across the dinner table, we start chatting up. And um, so this gentleman runs a business which runs predominantly on data. Okay, that's his claim to fame. He's a challenger in the market. He's a challenger in the market and uh, I saw his revenues going flat. So I asked him, okay, fair enough. You've got so many billion dollars of revenue. So where are you going to hit up? So what's your plan for the next? You, you got a spike up. I see the curve. In the last six, seven years, he's got a spike up. Uh, I've, where are you going to go from here? So he says, I don't look, I've, I've already hit the, the plateau. My competition is going to kill me. I need to break into some new businesses. So if I need to break into new business, what is it? So I said, what are you going to play with? No, you've got voice data SMS. Your voice network is underutilized. You're running at less than 24% utilization on a voice network. So when I lay down a fiber, and if I, I can run a fiber to a 50% utilization, I've hit the max. So I'm running at a 50% utilization on the network. So I've got a 50% bandwidth there. You can uh, subsidize voice, give me free, buy customers, subs, and do that. Or I can, that's doable, but that doesn't give me money. That gives me subs, just killing the market. So I kill the competition. What else do you do? So his idea was that he let me get into e-commerce. I said, why would you get in the world get into e-commerce? And now Indonesia is a country which is where credit card systems are not so great. It's still a developing world. It's a still a cash-based economy. So think about India 90s or something, where people still didn't operate much on credit cards. Even today, uh, so, so interiors are still remote. And I said, why would you get into that business? He said, where do I get the subs? So if anybody has a wallet, is the prepaid wallet. So I put 200 bucks, 2 million rupiah, whatever else I put inside it. That's a wallet. Using that wallet, you don't have a credit card. Can I use that wallet and buy, make you buy goods? Because there is that craving to buy things. And there is a, there is a development happening. So can I use that wallet and make that buy? And in process, can I earn money? It's a good idea. But then the question becomes, how to operationalize it? Now think about it. Here is a telco which does data as a predominant business, wants to undercut on the voice market to kill the competition, wants to get into an e-commerce. Nothing to do with telco. So where do you see the back gap going? So then I said, that's a great idea. So that, what does it mean? And what is the investment you're going to put in? He's come up with a business model which says that you put a skin in the game. So the skin in the game approach is that you br I put a half a million dollars in. You put a half a million dollars in. The partner puts half a million dollars in. Okay. What comes out is we cut the share. We do a revenue share arrangement. So the business model has changed. My cost of operation has changed. And I've entered into a new market. 
Then he talks about let's get into the IoT business. So I said, why, what about, why don't you plunge into the IoT business? You understand IoT, right? You all understand IoT. So I said, why don't you plunge into the IoT business? So he said, look, uh, I mean, the IoT problem is uh, I need devices, I need sensors, I need to put it in, and I need to run a pilot. Who's going to fund it? And the IoT sensor community is pretty small. There's less funding. Uh, second problem in the IoT comes in is that uh, uh, I need spectrum. So spectrum comes at, it's, it's a low bandwidth spectrum. It comes at a 450 megahertz spectrum, I hit that. Because I want a low bandwidth spectrum, if I'm going to keep millions of these devices around, I can't run it on an 1800 megahertz spectrum. Okay, so if you understand the spectrum's range, uh, which comes in. So I said, if you're going to get 450 megahertz, where are you going to get it from? So he said, no, I'm working on it. And a month later, I, I again went back and we spoke. And he's actually sitting and tying up with somebody who's got a 450 megahertz spectrum. Okay, now think about it. Here's a man who's got a few billion dollars of revenue, who constantly has to evolve. And he's very crystal clear. I don't, if I don't evolve, I die. And that message is so predominant and the whole idea of that if I don't innovate, if I don't create, I shall die. And that's what the industry is all about. And that's where you see the industry changing. So today, when, today why does a Vodafone an idea struggle with a geo. So now think about a geo launch. Now, so before geo got launched, I was actually in their campus and I was looking at their plans. To and we were actually working with them and doing some few things with them. Uh, they had actually sized up to. Uh, this is one of the few telcos in the world which I've seen which had sized up to 100 million subs. So when I create an infrastructure up. Okay, when I create a stack up and I create the hardware and infrastructure to run a telco and I put in, usually I run it for 10 million subs, 15 million subs and that way on. So I can slowly gradually grow up. Here's a man who had tied up with 100 million subs. He's not even launched. Okay, so before launch, there were 100 million subs. And today, if you think about it, there's only telco in the world which has done 75 million subs in what, four months or five months. That's an astronomical number. So you got to think big. You got to put the capex out on the table. You got to put your business plans out on the table. You got to play the big game. And playing the big game, which means that you'll have to to counter that big game. You'll have look at what Vodafone and Idea are doing. They're struggling. And why are they struggling? Because you missed the boat of innovation. So if you look at Vodafone today, it's still fragmented internally. Right, you still struggle. You had network issues. You had network problems. They plagued with it. The government intervened. They tried to do something. They tried to correct the network. But how do they interact? Well, you can't beat free. There's nothing as how do you beat free? How do you beat zero dollars? Now, as an assignment, I would like you guys to. I don't know whether you guys have thought through how does Geo operate. Why do, how, how, do, how the hell do you think Geo is making money? Have you guys looked at that as a model, as a case study or something in your class? You should, no? because end of the think about it. Every business exists for money. It's not, there's nothing called charity in business, right? I run a shop. Today, I run a business in Asia Pack, which I run for my unit. I don't run a charity shop. I might put a half a million dollars, a million dollars as investment for somewhere. I might go and do a, take a project at a loss. I might go execute a project at a loss. But that loss is with, I have a vision to think about how I'll make money. I'm here to make money. Geo is here to make money. Geo is not doing any charity to you guys. So have you guys th thought through the model? Why, why do they, how do you think they're making money? It's an interesting problem. Look through it. Because I think it will make you think about how and why they operate and, and what is the game plan. It's an it's a excellent plan. It's actually, it's interesting. It's, a, it's about, see, business is all about taking bets. Okay. What is the bet which Mukesh is taking, Mukesh Mani is taking on the job and how is he driving that bet? So, so all of us in business today, whether I run my unit, today I take a bet. 
and I have lost money also. Let me be candid also. I have gone ahead, I have played the money, I have lost money uh, in a lot of places. But I made money also. And that's okay. That's part of the, that's why you, you are part of the business group which you exist in, right? So it's not, it's all, it's all, a, business is all an art. It's not a science, right? At beyond a level, it becomes an art. I know it's becoming a monologue. So I was, I was hoping you guys would have some views of the telco market. What is your views of the telco market? Let me ask you guys. Or you guys have no views. Yeah, please. So, Jio, um, first of all, uh, it, it also convert in an app. First, first, we have to download it. By this, uh, he earned money, and uh, sub, uh, some of money he earned from the advertisement and uh, other field, uh, the videos which we download by this. So, uh, so, let me ask you, how much money does an ad generate? <coughs> It depends on company which. So what kind of ad? You're going to get this Mayantra, Jabong, Amazon, Flipkart. What else? I think these are ads you get, right? If somebody wants to buy a shoe or a dress or, so a it is in or some airline ticket or something, right? In Karol, sir. So usually ads uh, get you what? A cent? One cent to two cents. No, no more than that. Okay. It usually is in somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, conversion. Do you guys also understand that ads are bid? You can bid for ads. There's a, there's a, actually a marketplace like a stock market. You can bid on ads, um, and there are people bidding on that. So so if I say to you, here is a population base of 20 year old or 22 year old male guy who is thinking of buying a suit tomorrow, or is searching for suit. And if I can nail your profile down, I can bid for your, your eyeball. And there are people who will bid on it. And uh, I, there, are, there are what you call trading exchanges for that. So you guys are familiar with that model? Or you guys, do you guys talk about these kind of business models in your classroom? I don't know. Yes, yes. Yes. So that's a, that's a, but how many cents will that get you? I'm just still curious. Like from you, the operator, you the geo man, will that get you? Have analysis and see, see if you think about it, before uh, the Reliance guys invested in uh, geo and the fiber was getting launched now, parallelly they were investing in content companies. He's got enough st ex uh, money invested in most of these television ex content providers. And that provides you an ecosystem. So he's created an ecosystem, you got horoscope to movie to content and etc. And um, Look up, look up the the plans which they have. So if you look up the plans which they have set up, so you got this four four hundred MB, one GB, three GB, whatever plans. Calculate the revenue from that, okay? And you calculate that revenue, and then you go back and look at Vodafone's plans, or Ideas plans, or Airtel's plans. You look that up and see what was their revenue, and what is the revenue here? And you compute the difference in the revenue. You will notice that Geo's, Geo is more expensive than Airtel, right? It, it, in net net of the result, the Geo is a lot more expensive. Yeah, sure. Please. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Shriti Malakar. I'm from Guwahati, Assam. Uh, sir, according to me, Reliance is ba basically uh, building its uh, loyal market on the first hand mm -hmm. because uh, this generation is totally internet freak. Mm -hmm. Facebook is. Uh, this, matlab, uh, Facebook is basically uh, reading your personality through various tests and uh, I have seen this over the past few weeks that I was surfing Facebook that whatever videos I like, the same kind of videos are generated again and again. So uh, this is something, internet has become something we cannot live without now. Even uh, after demonetization, 
the Paytm wallets and uh, this th stuffs have really generated a, a cashless uh, economy. And basically, Reliance is uh, building that trust with uh, their customers so that in the long run, it's a future plan. So that in the long run, when we uh, when they charge for the money, uh, uh, initially the plan was for 31st March. And then he extended it to 30 June. Yeah. So basically, he is getting the uh, maximum number of population of India to his content so that on the uh, long run, these people are so much addicted to 4G, thinking that their plan is the cheaper compared to other telecom rates. Okay. Can I ask you one simple question? Yes, sir. You have a dual SIM phone? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, moment I suppose tomorrow Jio comes and says, okay, you pay a uh, thousand bucks for this plan which you have. What will you do? Sir, you compared throw that SIM in the garbage and put an idea SIM, right? Yes, sir. What is sub? What is your loyalty base? You, you let me tell you at least in my, my age we should at least have some lens of loyalty how many how many of you are loyal to any site or any sub any thing you tomorrow i you know, i throw a word around that are this site gives me 10, 20 percent discount forget everything else tomorrow i tell you that uh, pizza hut will give it a 15 percent discount domino's gives me only 10 percent discount all of you will jump to pizza hut or is there anybody who says no i still want domino's domino's sir you are brand lovers, huh? okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a taste issue. That. Why do I care? I, I have seen people who just, every, every other month they are changing their numbers and yes. throwing sims around. Yes. Why? So some guy has got some free. I will tell you a classical case. Uh, let me explain to you. Maybe I will go back in time and explain to you. Uh, when I used to live in the States and I go back to that point in time, when at and and MCI used to fight, okay. And AT&T and MCI are two big telcos and they used to fight for revenue. And I used to work in MCI. I used to be an architect. I was a technical architect in those days in uh, MCI. And I used to design systems for them. Uh, but every other month, uh, MC, uh, AT if, if I join MCI, AT&T would send me a check saying that if you jump to AT&T, I'll give you $20. Next month, I jump. Why do I care? Eh? 20 bucks, $20 free, why the hell do I care? Moment I jump, one month later, MCI will send me a $25 check, please jump, promotion, because there is a fight, right? So immediately I will jump next month to MCI, why do I care? What is my loyalty? I don't care a lot. The price is the same, I get 20 bucks, 25 bucks, you get me. I have earned money for two years, both of them tanked. MCI became bankrupt after some time. Uh, by the time I left, I think MCI was acquired by Worldcom, Worldcom took it out, they stripped it across, the company went bankrupt. Whereas and acquired it, it's now merged. The company does not exist. AT&T went down the hill. SBC acquired AT&T. AT&T became the old AT&T was destroyed. You can do that. You can do predatory pricing, which is a good idea, but there is a life to it, and there has to be an end goal to it. So if you if you're getting into the predatory pricing game, uh, where do you end? That's why I go back to the airline industry case study. If you guys ever pull it up, pull it up that case study, you will find it somewhere on the net. Pull it up and see how the, how the companies go down, down the glide. So predatory pricing at some point will get, will destroy the industry. And the regulator will have to step in to, to correct that. So I'm not a big, uh, history tells us that it does not work very well. So think about it. Uh, they will have to price it, even when Geo starts pricing it, they will have to price it competitively. They cannot let it go. So now what happens, think about it, if, if Vodafone and Idea merge and you get a 380 million sub kind of a volume and you got uh, Airtel sitting at 230 million subs, right, today. Uh, so what will Airtel do? They will come in with a, some killer price. Can Airtel afford it? No. They are already in debt, they have got a huge debt. Uh, debt to uh, debt to revenue ratio. If you look, pull up the ratios up. The ratios are not that great, right? You guys do an a PNL analysis, right? So you can if you anal analyze Airtel's PNL, it's not that great. That's when they 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 see they took a bet in Africa some time back. If you guys remember the Africa bet they took, and uh, they went and acquired all the opcos in Afri Africa. Africa mm -hmm. that bet does not played out, right? So they took a big huge debt on the books on that. Um, so they will play. There's a survival. Airtel will die otherwise. 
Um, so essentially, it will become predatory pricing. At some point, the regulatory will step in and will stop it. So free will not last for long. And so will the low prices. At some point, it will have to come to some balance. Because uh, this free uh, internet service, eventually they will start a comparative uh, competition between the all telecom sectors. Correct. I don't know the longer strategy for the companies, but eventually if they end up competing with each other, that is how Kingfisher came to a death and it is vanished already. So when they compete, uh, whose plan is better for the customers? Because the market itself is of the customers. Now it is not run by the buyers. Because uh, as you said, the loyalty, even on my stand, I would say that, yes, I won't be loyal to Jio if I get a better plan from other telecom, obviously. Good. So that jumping from one to another, because this is a very uh, rapid economy and rapid, cho uh, we have various choices. So that may be uh, calling into a halt, because as it is said, no lunch is free. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I agree with you, what you're saying. Uh, I just want to bring out another subtle fact uh, since uh, all of you are studying uh, how do you price yourself any product I sell so now this is a classical problem I face day in day out right I sell same set of services in in Europe I sell in US I sell in Indonesia I sell in Australia I sell in New Zealand I sell in different markets I sell in Korea how do I price myself now and I want you guys to think about one more small example Singapore Airlines I don't know how, if you, ever, you know those guys, right? They've been in existence for some time. It's one of the more expensive airlines. So you, today also you go on the net to go buy a ticket um, for anything. SQ will be always be the higher fare guy. You got Malaysia, Malaysian Airlines, MH, right? So they are the cheaper guys. And then you got all the other ones, the Tigers, uh, Air Asia's of the world, that part of the region which you work in. They're cheaper. But still SQ is away, it's still profitable, it's a very profitable entity, extremely profitable compared to MH or, or Air Asia or Tiger Air or any of the other ones or Dragon Air or even Cathay to that matter. Why? I pay a price for the product and the product has a value, a value, a perceived value or a real value of some kind. So given a choice today, when I fly, I still ask my agent, hey, if SQ is available, take SQ. Because there is a reason. Half the time, I'm, God, I'm sitting in the plane. Every, 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 other, every alternate week, I'm sitting in some plane, some country. I'm sick and tired of it. I mean, as well as have a service which, which, which I can, there's a finite time when I'll arrive at some place, some time zone, and figure out where to jump into a meeting or something. Technology and beyond the solution. Right? And uh, doing business is different. You got to walk the street. You got to know the customer. You got to walk the street. You got to walk the floor. And develop the connects. That's the only answer to that. There's no other solution to it. Is this the answer to your question? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from anybody? Anything else you guys want to know or? Yeah? Should we call it, uh, should we call it a day then? Or? I know the lunch is waiting for you guys and you guys are all hungry. I think I'm sure you, you've been all holed up inside this place for, and there's, there's never fun to talk with when, when man, between man and his food. All right, I think guys, it's fun talking to you guys. Uh, and thanks for enduring my ramblings uh, for the last whatever minutes. I appreciate you taking time and trying to listen and trying to garner uh, some thoughts from my ramblings. I hope it was some useful to you and uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. It is rightly said that a day spent with a wise man is better than a life spent with books. With this, 
I thank you, sir, for such a wonderful session. I'm sure the batch has learned a lot. Thank you. Here we part for a break. Be back soon.